is negative two sevenths. Does anybody need to know why, or did you all write negative two sevenths? Who bothered to do it? Gersil, you don't need to record this. It's already recording. You can put, go ahead and put your phone away. Or did that entire lecture thing I just did just be proven true? Yeah, it was the second one, I know. So, okay. Uh, the second one, okay. Everybody seemed to have trouble with the second one because as I was walking around, it was blank for almost everybody. Graph using slope-intercept form. Hmm, if only I had a whole page about slope-intercept form. I do. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, b is the y intercept. You will notice that this form, y equals mx plus b, looks an awful lot like this, except there's a 2 with the y. How would I get rid of that 2 times y? I would divide this side by 2. Okay. If I divide this side by 2, is this equal anymore? No, of course not. I would have to divide this side by 2, which would get me 3 divided by 2, x, minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, equals y. Does this look exactly like this? Yes. So what does that make this? The slope. Since the slope is in fraction form already, that is rise over run. And what is this? That's the y-intercept. Is that one single spot on the graph? Yeah. Yes, it is right there. Zero, negative two. Now my slope is three over two. I rise three, one, two, three, and I run one, two. Or I could have dropped one, two, three, and run to the left one, two, and made my line. Whenever y is by itself, the number with x is the slope, the number by itself is the y-intercept. Is it possible that the y-intercept could be a fraction? Sure it could. For example, if that was 5 over 2, then this wouldn't be 2. It would be 2 and a half, and the dot would be right there. Right? Excellent. Graph using x and y-intercepts. What is every single x-intercept in the universe? 1. No. Oh. x, comma, 0. What is every single y-intercept in the universe? Zero comma, y. zero comma y. If y is zero, what happens to that term? It disappears because three times zero is zero. zero. So what I have when I'm working with this one is 6x plus 12 equals zero. What is your job in math class whenever you see a single letter and an equal sign? Isolate it. 6x equals negative 12. x equals negative 2. There is an x. x is negative 2, so I write negative 2 there. Negative 2 comma 0 is right there. Then, what's going to happen to this x term? It is going to disappear because x is 0. 3y plus 12 equals 0. 3y equals negative 12. y equals negative 4. There's a y, negative 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and I connect the line. And lastly, slope, oh, slope, m, ooh, the first x I see, x1, ooh, the first y I see, y1, ooh, the second x I see, x squared, ooh, x squared, x2, the second y I see, y2, what uses y2, y1, x2, x1, and m. m equals, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All you do is fill it in. What's m? What is it? What's y2? y minus what's y1? Over x2. Minus... What's 5 minus minus 3? What do you do every time in all of math when you have fraction equals anything? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. What's negative 5 times 8? Negative 40 equals what? 4 times y minus 1. 4y minus 4. 
What's your job whenever you see a single letter in algebra? Isolate it. Isolate it. Plus 4, plus 4. Negative 36 equals 4y. Y equals negative 9. Dun, dun, dun! To quote Belt from the Croods. At least I was told it was Belt from the Croods. I couldn't remember who it was. Some kid in my grade 11 class said it was Belt from the Croods. All right, all right. Turn the page over. What? Do you keep looking at me for? Parallel and perpendicular line slopes. All right, here we go. Every single person in this class, in this class uh -huh. put a dot somewhere on the left hand side so somewhere over here put a dot it doesn't matter where I'm not going to put my dot until you put your dot because I don't want you putting the dot where I put my dot go Anywhere? that's what I said <laughs> all you have to do is put a dot on the paper I'm actually seeing people erasing right now all you have to do is put a dot. You cannot do this wrong. Well, unless you don't put it on the line. Oh. No. Anywhere. Anywhere? And, oh my God. Put a dot anywhere on the left side of that graph. There's too many From the dot that you put down, I want you all, wherever you put your dot, to put another dot, connect, don't, now there's some rules. Put another dot anywhere on the left again, anywhere on the left again, anywhere? but I want you to tell me the slope that you made. So, you really should use cardinal points, yes? Go. I know, this is really stressful. Another dot and then connecting the dots and then telling me the slope. Holy crap, nobody told me Math 10 would be this hard. I'm putting dots and I'm counting. Son of a bitch. I wish somebody had warned me. I would have taken 10 A and W if I'd known I would have had to count and put dots on paper. No, A and W is 10 times harder than this. Everybody thinks A and W is easier. A and W is 10 times harder than this. What's the worst thing? What's the thing you guys are absolutely the worst at at math? Don't say fractions because the answer is word problems. No, word problems is what you people are the worst at. Every single question in A&W is a word problem. Every single question. Every single question. Yeah, they are. All right. I am going to put my dot right there. So for me, my slope is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... One, two, three. So my slope is 12 over 3, which equals 4. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Now, everybody, take your lower dot, because one of your dots has to be below the other one, and move it five points to the right. One, two. And put the dot. It should look something like this, but it probably won't be at negative 5 like mine is. Now, guess what I'm going to get you to do with the upper dot? That Same down. thing. Wow. One, two, three, four, five. Now, when I connect that dot, without even counting, what is my second slope? The same, the as, same as the first slope. Mine is 4. All of yours will be the same. Yes? 
will either of these lines ever turn? No. No. So these lines will continue on forever. Does that mean they can touch? No. No. So that tells us two, that's the symbol for parallel. That's why I've written it right below parallel. Two parallel lines have the same slope. Now, everybody understands that. Everybody's like, yeah, okay, I can see that, no problem. But if I just turn two words in that question, half of my students cannot answer this question that I'm about to ask. I have a line. Its slope is four sevenths. You have another line. It has the same slope of four sevenths. What one word describes those two lines? So none of you are fooled. Good. Because two lines that are parallel have the same slope, but then you have to understand that two lines with the same slope are automatically parallel. It goes both ways. Everybody cool? Yes. That's the easy one. All right? Now we got to talk about perpendicular. First of all, do you know what perpendicular means? Does anybody know? Addison, we, we're voguing. What? Okay, so you just drew your arms like that. That's perpendicular? No. That was straight. Ah, I see. What does it mean to be perpendicular? Let's use some words. One's vertical, one's horizontal. That would be an example of perpendicular. Okay, but what if I were to tell you that this is also perpendicular? Neither of those is horizontal, neither of those is vertical. What? You're getting warmer. Addison. There you go. Anytime two lines meet at a 90 degree angle, you have perpendicular. So if you don't know that, you should write that down. That perpendicular means two lines cross at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to have a sip of my lovely Bengal spice tea. And then I'm going to say, ah, afterwards. All right. Now, to explain this, I must use two examples, okay? Because there are two properties of perpendicularity, all right? Mm -hmm. The first one, we are going to use Braden's first example, a vertical and a horizontal line. So everybody put a dot at x equals negative 5. Does everybody have their dot? Yeah. Excellent. Now draw a vertical line through that dot that goes up to y equals 5 and down to y equals negative 5. Everybody good? Yes. All right. Now, you're all smart kids. You know that a straight vertical line has an infinite or undefined slope, correct? Yes. But you also know that slope, excuse me, is rise over run, yeah? So how far did I rise here? 10. 10. So I rose 10, and what was my run? Zero. Zero. Does everybody agree? Yeah. Excellent. Now... Take your pen or pencil and put a dot at x equals negative 10, which is right out here. And put another dot at 0. Now, you are all smart kids. A horizontal line has a slope of 0. Now, but again, we are going to draw what it actually is in rise over run. What is the rise on my red line? Zero. What is my run? Ten. Ten. Now, are those lines perpendicular? Do they meet 
at a right angle. Yes, they do indeed. What do you notice about the slopes? Jacqueline. They are flipped. Now, there is a mathematical term for that when you flip over a fraction. It is reciprocal. So, point one, and I'm going to write that in purple because that is a mixture of blue and red. Point one. Perpendicular lines, and there's a symbol for perpendicular. It's an upside down T. Perpendicular lines have reciprocal slopes. Everybody cool? And you can see it. It is quite easily proven there. Yes? Excellent. Now, take your pen or pencil or whatever it is that you are writing with and go put a dot at, again, at zero, zero. Ya, ya? Ya, ya, ya. Now, take your pen and put another dot at five, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah? Yeah. Connect them. Okay. What is that slope? One. One, right? But let's write it out what it really is. Five How, five. It is five over five. Yeah? Yeah. Now, let us get another dot and let's put it at five zero. Not zero five, five zero. Where's that? Five to the right. Five to the right. And let's put a dot at zero five. Now, you're intelligent young people. I just put the corners of what kind of shape? Box. The corners of a circle. <sighs> Square. Square. <laughs> it is indeed a square. Now, when I connect those, obviously, what angle has to be made where they meet? 90, 90 degrees, because it's a square, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, you are intelligent young people. What is the orange slope? Negative 5 over 5. Now, being the intelligent young people that you are, you already know that perpendicular slopes have to reciprocate, yes? Why did I use 5 and 5? Because when they reciprocate, they're going to be the same, aren't they? But something happened over here, didn't they? And when I mix brown and or, or green and orange, I, of course, get brown. 2. What is the other thing that all, all perpendicular slopes must do? They must reciprocate, and what would you say is the difference here? One is positive and one is negative. So they also, perpendicular lines, have opposite slopes. So parallel is easy. They're always going to be the same. Right? Perpendicular slopes have two rules they have to follow. One, one of them has to be positive, one of them has to be negative. And two, they're just reciprocals of each other. So whatever your rise over run is for the first one, you flip it and change the sign for the second one. Everybody good? Yeah. So parallel lines have the same slope. Now, if they have the same slope, what else does that mean? What is their rise over run? What is their M? What is their change in dv over change in iv? What is their change in x over change in y over change in x? 
What is their y minus two, y two minus y one over x two minus x one? The They're always the same. So are these two lines, these two slopes that I'm about to write, are they parallel? Three. Are those parallel slopes? Yes. Of course they are. Why? No, Addison. They're, they're, the same fraction, just they're the exact one. same fraction. Well done. Let's try another one. Are those ones parallel? Yes. Why? Because three halves is one and a half, and 1.5 is one and a half. Yeah? yeah. Everybody Gouda? Yeah. Lovely. No, if you're Swiss, you have holes. I know. Or corners, if you were a circle of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite and reciprocal. Now, opposite means line one has a positive slope. So to be perpendicular to line one, line two must have a negative slope. If line one has a negative slope, to be perpendicular, line two must have a positive slope. If line one is A over B, then line two to be perpendicular must be? Line two must be negative B over A. If line one is B negative B over A, the perpendicular slope must be? A over B. Is everybody good? Yeah. Excellent. Fill in the bottom of this page on your own. Go. Yes, it's my, it's my Arabian Nights whistle because I have three wishes, one of which is that all 30 of you will be able to do this. I know it's a dumb wish because it will never come true. It's like wishing for something crazy like somebody on the internet to say, you've given me a really good measured argument. You've changed my mind. See what I did there? A few of you saw what I did there. I don't think they really saw what I did there, Brody. Who's going first? Don't all say it at once. It makes it really hard for me to decide who said the right answer. <laughs> this is really complicated. I'm seeing so many hands, I can't even decide who to ask. Jacqueline? Not quite. Negative three over two, because this was already positive, so I flip it and change the sign. Uh, who's doing the next one? Jazri. Pardon me? One seven. Absa Smurfly correct. Who's doing the next one? Eight over two would work. Nope. Pardee? Four. Excellent. What about 12 over 3? Yeah. What about 64 over 16? Yeah. What about 20 over 4? Yeah. No. 20 divided by 4 is 4? No, it's 5. Get your head in the game. Who's doing the next one? 11 fifths. Nicely done. Was that Jaden? Well done. Who's doing the fifth one? I'm going to say it's negative zero. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, neg no, negative one over zero. 
which is? No. No. Undefined. And what's the last one? No. No. Zero. Okay. All right. Obviously, we need to do a little bit of work here. Don't write anything down. Just look. Zero, yes? Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. What is that slope? One over whatever number you said. One over twenty four, yes? Is that a very big number? That number, 1 over 24. That fraction, is that a big number? No, it's very small. So what is the slope? Very low, yes? Less than a bunny hill, right? Okay. When I move to here, what does my rise become? 2 over 24. Bit bigger. Bit bigger. What's that one? Three, Three over, over 24. 1 24th, 1 12th, 1 8th, 4 over 24, 1 6th, 5 over 24 doesn't reduce nicely. 4 over 24, uh, sorry, 1 24th, yeah, 1 6th, 3 over 20, or uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 over 24 doesn't reduce. 8 over 24, 1 3rd, right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 half. Now, please notice that as my rise increases, the slope gets steeper. Agreed? Yes. Now let's go the other way. What is the slope that I am drawing right now? 24 over 1. Agreed? Yes. Which would be a slope of 24, Yes. Okay, what if I were to cut that in half? Now it's 24 over 0. 0.5, yes? yes? Which would be what? Get your calculators out, because well, I know you can't, no. No, it would be No. 48. 48. Oh. Agreed? Yes. Uh, okay, what if I put it to right there, 0. 0.1? What would that be? Yeah, it, was, it would drive me up the wall, too. I know, I know, I know. But you should probably tell her that. I know. Eh. What is 24 divided by 0. 0.1? Get out your calculators. You can't do it in your head. I know you can't. 240. Yes, it is 240. So what are you noticing? As this gets smaller, what happens to this number? Okay, what would it be if it was 24 over 0. 0.01? 2,400. We've added one zero. What if it was 0 0.001? What if it was 0 0.0001? 246,000. I don't know where the six came from, but what if it was 0 0001? 2.4 million. What if it was 0 0.00001? 24 million, right? What is happening to the denominator each time? Gets it gets smaller. What happens to my slope? It gets, it gets bigger. So what if it was 24 over 500 zeros and a 1? It would be 24 followed by how many zeros? 500, 500 of them. And colossally large number, yes? Yeah. So what if it was 24 divided by an infinite amount of zeros and then a 1? It would be 24 and an infinite amount of zeros, which would be a colossally large number, yes? Yeah. That is why you cannot divide by zero. Because eventually, it gets to infinity. And the number, the answer, is infinity. And can we ever get to infinity? No. That is why infinity, why a vertical slope is undefined. Because the rise is infinite, 
or one, 24, 37, whatever, right? But the run doesn't exist. When you divide any number by a really, really tiny number, you get a gigantic number. So if you divide any number by infinity, you must get infinity, which by definition is undefined and does not exist. Everybody cool? That is why this is undefined and why this is zero. Addison. Uh, how, when you get to when we're counting, we go out from, uh, and we get to a million and then we keep going. Are there any numbers that like just keep going? Or can we just keep going? Or you can keep going. They just don't bother naming them. They don't bother naming them. Um, the highest number I know is a nonillion, which is one followed by uh, six is a million, nine is a billion, twelve is a trillion, fifteen is a quad is a quadrillion, eighteen is a quintillion, nine or twenty one is a sec a pentillion. 24 is a sextillion, 27 is a septillion, 30 is an octillion, 33 zeros is a nonillion. And I do not know what comes after that because it doesn't matter. I know of a Google. Which is a Google is one with 100 zeros. And then a Google Fox is one with a Google non-zero. Yes. No, because there, there's only nine numbers in our math system, zero to nine. That's how we count, right? Like, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Okay. What's the next number? Ten, which is a group of nine, one group of nine, and zero left over. Now, wait. Now we start in the 11s, right? Yeah. So there was the original nine. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. One whole group, uh-huh. right? And th- no, just quiet, okay? Just give me a sec. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I didn't do enough. Nine, right? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine is a group of all of our numbers with none left over. That's what's next. We actually count from zero to nine, not from one. So the next group starts at 10 and goes up to what? No, 19. Then I have a group of two with none left over. And that goes up to 29. Then I have a group of three with none left over. That's how we count. It's base 10. Why? Because we have 10 fingers. That's why we do it. Now, there are cultures in the world, for example, the Inca, who were vastly superior to everybody on math for centuries, they didn't count at a base of 10. They counted at a base of 20. Does anybody want to guess why? They were barefoot. They didn't wear shoes. So they could count to 20. This is 20 in Incan because that is a dude standing there like this. 5, 10, 15, 20. You are laughing, but that is true. Now, you may think that base 10 is the common way to count, but it is not. The real way that we count in our world is binary. 0 and 1 because that is how computers talk to each other. A computer can only answer yes and no questions. It is either no or yes, which is why the next time you go home, look at the power switch on any of your devices. It's an O and an I, and a lot of people think input, output, but no, it's zero and one. Zero is no, don't send power through this switch. One is yes, send power through this switch. That is how computers talk to each other. We also use a hexadecimal based system in computers, which is zero to nine, and then we're out of numbers, right? 
So we use A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And that makes more numbers. That is what hexadecimal is. Desa, 10. Hexa, 7. Anything else you want to know about number theory before we go on? I can work with it. I don't know it off by heart. I can't look at ones and zeros and say what the number is. I have to think about it. Yeah, there is. There's a neat experiment I used to do in science class where the whole class would hold hands. And if you got a, a zero, you didn't squeeze the person next to you's hands. And if you got a one, you did. Right? Yeah. And then anybody in the ring could change it. Never mind. Maybe we'll do it one day if we have time. Okay. All right, back to where we were. Okay. So here we are on page blah, 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 blah. I have two lines. One of them is line ST, and the other one is line AB. I want to know if they're parallel. If they're parallel, what would their slopes be? The same. If they're perpendicular, what will their slopes be? Opposite reciprocals. And if they're neither, what will they be? Anything else, all right? So how am I going to make this decision? What must I find for both of these lines? Addison, the slope. The slope. What is the slope of line ST? I'm going to write M line ST, slope of line ST. What is it? Do you see X's and Y's with S and T? Yeah. What are they? How did I, yep. How did I tell you to make sure you always do it right? What should you do with the X's and Y's that work with S and T? How can you make sure you always do this right? Label them. What should I call this one? This one. You want to make that X one? Fill in the rest. You're, I'm forcing you guys to make that one X one. Fill in the rest. Ten more seconds. All right, what am I writing here? Y1. Y1. Why is that Y1? Because his partner is X1. So what does that make this guy? X2. X2. What does that make this guy? X1, X2, Y2. Just keep saying stuff, Emma. You'll get there eventually. Now, <laughs> fill in the formula. The formula says Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. What is Y2? You just write what you see. 5 minus, what is Y1? Negative one. You just write what you see over X2. What is X2? Negative, Negative 1 minus Negative four. Negative 4. What is 5 minus minus 1? Negative. 6. What is 1 minus Negative 4? Negative 1 minus Negative 4. Negative 5. Do we have our slope now? It isn't. Come on, you're killing me, Jacqueline. Negative 1 plus negative 1 minus negative 4 is 3. three. 6 divided by 3 is 2. two. Are we good? Yes. What is a better way to write 2 when we're dealing with slopes? Two. Right, because we want our rise and run, yeah? yeah? All right. What is the M of line AB? Now, I'm going to change it up this time because I mean that way. This is not X1. This is going to be X2. Fill in the rest. We're on page 134, Amelia. What is 1 minus minus 1? 2. What is 1 minus 5? Four. Negative 4. Would Mrs. Bag Crumble let you leave that fraction? No. What is it? Negative. Negative. 
negative 1 over 2. Is this guy positive? Is this guy negative? Is this guy 2 over 1? Is this guy the reciprocal of 2 over 1? So what can I say about ST and AB? What symbol can I put in the middle? The upside down T. They're perpendicular, dude. Ah, I see that. Do you? Yeah. Ms. Meyer. You left a mistake. On the red one, ah, the middle yeah. one, you didn't put the second bracket. <sighs> now, oh. The vertices. Vertices means corners. The vertices of this triangle are right here. Is it a right triangle? If it is a right triangle, then two of those lines must meet at what angle? 90 degrees. So two of those lines are perpendicular, yes? How many corners are in a triangle? Three. Three, which means I would need to check six lines, wouldn't I? That's a giant pain in the ass. Can I make it any easier on myself? Probably. Damn right I can. Where is three, negative three, one? One, two, three, and up one. There's A, right? Where's six, negative two? Six and where is C? Now, there is my triangle. Now, have a look at that. Oops, that was a nice line. Good thing, I'm, good thing I didn't become a brain surgeon. Mr. Hawkins was right. Where is the only possible 90 degree angle? This corner, yes? yes? So I need to check which slopes. The slope of which line? AC... And the slope of CB. And if, there, if this is a right angle triangle, what will those slopes do? They will be perpendicular. It means they will have the same numbers, but they will be reciprocated, and one will be positive and one will be negative. Which one should we check first? AC. AC, all right. So if we're doing AC, we'll do that in red. Here is an X. What should I make it? Uh, X. X2. You want to make that one X2? That's cool. So what's this guy? Y2. So what's this guy? X1. X1. So what's this guy? Y1. So let's fill it in. The slope of AC equals what? Just fill it in. I'll wait. Tell me what to write for the numerator. Negative three. You could write negative 3, but I'm going to write 1 minus 4 because we always like to show work so Mr. Myers can tell us where we went wrong on our test. What's the denominator? Negative 3 minus 3. What is 1 minus 4? Negative 3. What is negative 3 minus 3? Negative 6. Is that a fraction we would ever be allowed? No. Two negatives make what? And 3 over 6 is? Excellent. Now let's do the blue one. Just for practice, I'm going to make this one x1. So what does that make this one? y1. Now in reality, I would make these ones y1, wouldn't I? Because I've already set them up. But for practice, I want to use both. So you get used to the fact that you can put in them in any order you want. So that makes this guy x2 and this guy y2. What is the slope of CB? You don't need to tell me the answer. You just tell me what to write.
Excellent. Over. Now what? Which is? Are they opposite reciprocals? So is this a right triangle? Yes. Now some of you might say, Mr. Myers, this is so stupid. Why would you ever need to do that? Huh? No, 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 no. Why would you ever need to find something like this? Can any of you think of a possible application of having, of knowing what the shape of something would be? That could do, right? Building, surveying, right? I got some land, right? Are those lines where your property ends and the next guy's property begins, are they really spray painted on the ground like they are in Bugs Bunny? No, they're imaginary. You got to sometimes find them. This is the type of thing that you do. Okay? Okay. okay. What time? 12.34, we got loads of time. All right. So turn to page 135. Determine a value for A, which makes AB parallel to CD. If they're parallel, what are their slopes? Equal. equal. So that would mean that the slope of AB would have to equal the slope, that was supposed to be red, the slope of CD, correct? Okay. Well, what is the slope of AB? I'm not going to label it. I want you to label it however you want. But I want you to write out all four numbers that you would need to do the slope of AB. Somebody other than Braden would be very nice if they would give me this answer. Because I know Braden knows what he's doing. And I know that all of you wait for Braden to talk. And I know that Braden sits there saying, somebody else talk, somebody else talk in his head. But nobody ever does. So he eventually feels he has to take it upon himself to do it. And 99% of the time he's right. And then all of you can go, thank goodness. Jacqueline, what numbers would you write for the slope of AB? Okay, so what would be up top in the numerator position? 10 minus 5. And what would be in the denominator position? 7 minus, 7 minus 3. And that would equal, what would we do for the red side? Go ahead, Jacqueline. Might as well. Okay, so what would I write here? Over. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Tidy it up. What is 10 minus 5? Five? 5. What is 7 minus 3? 4. Equals. A minus 2 over 1. What solves this? Cross multiply. What is 5 times 1? 5. Equals. What is 4 times A minus 2? What is your job whenever you see a single variable? Isolate it. Bring the 8 over here. What happens to that negative 8? Positive 8. What's 8 plus 5? 13 equals 4a. And the last step? A would equal 13 fourths. Everybody cool? Four and a quarter. 4.25. Could we put that on a graph if we wanted to? Sure we could. we just go to four and a quarter. Yeah? Ease, bees, lemon, squeezy, right? Okay, well now I want to do A, B perpendicular to C, D. Right? Well, do we have to do everything? We already know what the slope of A, B is, don't we? What is it? No, that was the missing A value, Muscon. What is the slope of AB? 
the first slope we found. Five over four. But I don't want five over four because I don't want them parallel. I want them perpendicular now, don't I? So what should I write? So close. Negative four over five, because now I want to flip it and change the sign. Does the A, B, does the A and the two and the one change at all? No. A minus two over one. Now what do I do? Now what do I do? Cross multiply. What's negative four times one? What's 5 times a minus 2? Solve it. What happens to that negative 10? Adds to the other side. What's 10 minus 4? 6 equals 5a. What's my last step? What does a equal? Could we put that on a graph if we wanted to? Sure we could. It's 1.2. He's B's lemon squeezy, right? Now, does everybody see how that works? What I did there. What I did there and there. Everybody understand what I did? In the first one, I sought parallel, so the slopes had to be equal. But in the second one, I needed that other slope to be perpendicular, so I made it equal the perpendicular slope there. Everybody cool? All right. Pretty easy, right? If you can find one slope, you know all of them. Because if it's parallel, it's the same. If it's perpendicular, you flip it and change the sign. How hard is that? All right. There is a small bit of homework. Do some of it. When is it due? Monday. I would recommend trying some of these wordy problems here after you've done a couple of the ones with just numbers to make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah? Again, if you want the A, you would, of course, do all of it. But I know that's not really in the cards. So do some of it. Okay? Okay.